welcome to the first stop in the UCI BMX Freestyle World Cup Men's Qualifiers. We are here in the beautiful nation of Japan. It's my fourth trip here and I love the tradition, the culture. Japan has this blend of modern and ancient, past and future. I want to say a thank you to Hurricane Parks for our setup and our course for the BMX event today that's happening. This is Men's Qualifiers. I, my name is Claude Hickman from Los Angeles. I'm here with Egon Timmermans. Uh, tell us what, Timmermans. T Timmermans, tell, yeah. tell us, I'm sorry about that. Tell us a little bit of what we're gonna see here on this competition in the format. Well, first of all, thank you for having me over here, Claude. Uh, it's been a joy already being here in Japan. So what we're gonna see here is, this is the qualifying of the Men's uh, Freestyle Park World Cup here in Enoshima. So what we'll be seeing is these guys doing their best and making a shot and making it to the finals that we will have later on. So the competition format is we had a couple of riders already. They're having two runs of 60 seconds each. And then the overall score is going to be um, noted for their final uh, qualification. So both runs will count. Which is unique and not like the finals. So they each get a 60 second run and both scores will be added together to get their total score. Yeah, that is correct. So the grand difference that we will see is... So how do you judge something like this? Well, judging is uh, it's pretty complex because it involves a lot of, uh, of different criteria that we'll, uh, we'll talk about. Uh, we will see things like amplitude, for example, of a trick. Right here, you're seeing a beautiful shot of the course, a uh, course built by Hurricane Parks. I want to say thank you to them. Uh, a lot of the riders are calling this like a, almost like a backyard setup. It's so tight, everything is uh, very tall, which means they can get some big air off this box jump in the middle. There you see the riders warming up for their next heat. We're in heat number seven out of eight. You're gonna see some of the best riders in the world in just a minute. And as you said, Claude, it's, it's more of a technical setup. Uh, like a lot of riders are sometimes struggling with getting their lines right into park. Because like if you land like a bit off axis, let's say, and you end up at a different obstacle than you intended to, that can really mess up the run that you had planned. Watching them warm up has been beautiful. They weave back and forth <laughs> between each other. It's been a little scary at some time, but we're gonna talk about the judging right now. Tell us a little bit about what goes into judging this. Yeah, so there's a lot of criteria that we have to keep in mind. It's about the difficulty of the tricks. Uh, we're talking about amplitude, and so high height, height or jumping. Of course, you have to be original and it has to have some good flow, good style to it, and a lot of variation. So if you wanna do bar spins all over the course, that's fine, but it's not gonna get you a lot of points. Now, here's what's exciting. You're looking at some of the best pro park riders in the world. We have Olympic gold medalists coming up here. Uh, we've got guys who uh, won the rainbow jersey in the past. So, I mean, this is gonna be an incredible event to watch. These next two heats are gonna have some of the biggest tricks we've seen so far today. Seeing Logan Martin right there, throwing it over the box and watching these guys weave in and out of each other. I've been kind of biting my nails at point and watching them just come super close to running into each other, but they understand this course and how to ride it and how to watch out for each other. So if you take a look at that first start list for heat number seven, we have Caden Stone, Nick Bruce, Justin Dowell, and then also Martin Rantes from Croatia, Gustavo Oliveira from Brazil, and Kevin Prazza representing the state of Mexico. Now we have a minute 20 left in their warm-up. Uh, Egon, tell us a little bit about how these guys progress and learn these kind of tricks, because you don't just go out on a wooden ramp or a concrete ramp and learn these. All right. So we're oh, wow. Hey, run number two. Yep. Let's make some noise for Logan Martin. Oh my gosh, opposite flare whip, that was awesome! Oh wow, flip whip coming down the step down. Logan Martin! Look at him, that's one, two, three whips. But he pushed that one. Three, two, overall champion, Australian Cycling, Logan Martin! 
So what we just saw was a recap of last year's World Cup season, uh, where Logan got the end title, and I mean, he totally deserved it. First place in Saudi Arabia, first place in Montpellier, uh, the bronze medal in Brussels, <laughs> and ending strong on the last up in wow. Beijing in China with that first spot. So yeah, you saw Logan on that podium, and the real question today is, who will be the next person that stands there with that gold? Well, if we're looking at the current playing field, like there's still a lot of great riders coming up in the heat, heat number eight. But like we have Rim Nakamura, the Japanese rider, and he yep. might have that home serve advantage. Got a great crowd from Japan. We're here, uh, I didn't mention this, in a beautiful little offshore island of Inoshima, just south of Tokyo. It's an incredible vibe right by the beach. We have a crowd of hundreds of people who've come to watch today. But now we're getting ready to start up with our first rider, Caden Stone, he goes by Dubby. You can find him on YouTube. He's from Southern California. I get to watch him ride all the time and wait till you see some of the tricks this kid can throw over this box. Caden is gonna do some of the highest and most whips over this box. Here we go, first hit. Wow. That was a 360 double tail up to Barspin. He can throw some triples, some quads. He's starting off strong already. Let's see what he's got up in this round for us. Uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a hang up, but he's getting up. his speed back with some pedals. Come on, Caden, let's keep it going. Yeah, double tail whip. Quick little toboggan. Now, since it's a, it's a qualifier and both fronts got some riders will have a more, let's say, safer approach. Oh, with the cash wow. roll! Wow, right into that flare. Yeah, he may be playing it a little safe on this first run, and like you said, that's gonna that's gonna be smart to do. <laughs> I wouldn't call it casual a safe option, but <laughs> that's he did safe it. for him. That's high risk, high reward. Yeah, using every transition, using the whole time. Now you're seeing what I'm talking about when I say these are the best guys in the world. Uh, Dubby just at the X Games at the end of last year pulled the first 1440 on dirt that's ever been done. He's silvered at the X Games, and I know he's coming out here wanting to show what he can do on the feast course in the UCI. Yeah, 1440, that, that's four full rotations. Now look, take a look back at that slow action with the flare, and then here he's setting up. And we got that one, two, a double tail whip is what we call this. Taking it back at twice, and that's a cash roll. So as you kick off from the landing, uh, from the lip, you throw yourself into a 360 backflip. Caden's one of these kids that grew up riding with Daniel Sandoval from a very young age, and people started watching him on YouTube because he was so young but so good. Next up from the USA, we've got Nick Bruce coming in here representing USA for this first UCI BMX Freestyle World Cup, trying to get in the points that they need for this overall contest. Let's go, Nick. You got the bronze medal at the last World Championships in Glasgow, Scotland. Oh, look at wow. that! Air traffic controller, 360 <laughs> backflip, no hander. That's one of his signature tricks inspired Whoa. by the late Dave Mira. 540 flare. Getting nice and high on that wall, setting up, picking up speed. Ah, oh, yes! That was huge. He had so much time on that. Nice and high. Going back to the park. Quick little no-hander transfer. Wall ride. He has thought through this run. You know, these guys aren't just going in circles. They have thought through lines that they want to follow so that they can get all their tricks in. If they get thrown off their line, sometimes that hurts their whole run. Last seven seconds for Bruce. Double downside wow. tail up, kicking the bike down. Wow. Got time for one more, and he just calls it off right there. Great first run. No touches, no slips, and some big tricks. Now, we're not going to see a score, right? Because they're going to add the two scores together from the first run and the second run. So if you're wondering where the score is, they sort of have to just know how they did in their first run and based on that decide how to run their second one if they need to go for bigger tricks or if they can play it a little bit easier, right? Awesome run, 
that is a sick back with an out. When you add that no end in, we call that air traffic controller. <laughs> now, Nick was uh, supposed to be at the 2020 Olympics, but I think he had a, a knee injury that yeah. kept him from it. So he actually got a pretty good seating on, uh, let's say, medication. That mess up his run, but he still got like the ninth spot. And now next up is Justin Dowell, starting off wow. strong with Twix, which is a combination of that bar spin and the tail whip. He's one of the guys that th can throw that trick into a run. It's really almost a video trick. It's the Twix, the tail whip, and a bar spin at the same time. He makes it look easy at the beginning of all his runs. Keep it going, and if you take a close look at his sleeves, he has that rainbow on it. That means he's a, a, a vice, a ex world champion. He got that title in 2018. I think he can do a 360 Twix or something like that as yeah, well, can he? As well, yeah. Like he can throw a Twix in like every <laughs> kind of variation. All right, let's see what he's setting up for his last six seconds. A little X up over the hip. Pulling back into the ramp. And that's time for Justin Dowell. Now, when you're judging, uh, after the time has went out, if they're in the air, does the trick still count, or do they have to, like, land the trick before it counts in their score? No, so according to UCI regulations, both wheels have to be on the ground at the end of your run. So if okay. you're doing something mid-air and the buzzer hits zero, then fortunately it's not going to count towards your final score. So sometimes you'll see guys the last few seconds maybe just wave off it's in order to not get hurt or not ruin a run, a run that might have had no touches or no uh, coming off the bike. Watching oh. some replays of this. Let's take a look at that or we have. 540, no hander, tucking in the bars into his lap and throwing those hands. That was beautiful. Nice and stretched. All right, next up, we've got one of the riders' favorite riders, Marin from Croatia. Such a great guy, doing it for Red Bull. Also, a pretty chill guy. Also, uh, let's say, uh, a Fis Podia regular. Over the last year, it's like he's always been on a podium. Always sometimes walking away with a medal even. Now let's see what Martin is up for us. Getting nice and eye on that wall, setting up speed. Wow. Yes, 360. Barsman followed by another 360. Throwing the hands. Look at that. Nice Huge. flare. Huge flare. With the wall ride. Come on, Martin. Let's keep it going. Doing it for Croatia. Hrvatska. Nice and high. Wow. Yeah! Triple tail whip, double bar spin. And as you can see, like if you want to get a lot of points, you got to do the multiple combinations. Do double, triple, even quadruple tail to a bar spin. Yeah. Judges think, are going to like that. I think that might be the first triple whip we've seen today. Lauren put in a great, oh wow. With the front flare. That trick is so crazy looking. He's got four seconds left. Nice. I think that last trick is going to count. Got the hands off, landed in the transition. That looked like a textbook run. Solid. A lot of trick variation, amplitude, originality, and also a lot of risk involved as well. He did not hold back. No. Take a look at that replay. So that was that 720 bar spin, like doing a first full rotation of the 360 bar spin and then pulling into that next 360. Very technical riding, but also very clean riding. That was that triple tail whip from the jump box into the hip. And then a double whip backflip. Japan is so beautiful. You've got these hawks flying around just behind these guys as they're throwing their arms yeah. off. Maybe they think it's a cousin of theirs or something. I don't know. This is amazing. Oh, take a look at the next rider. All the way from Brazil, Gustavo Oliveira. This man brings samba to the course. Oh gosh, this kick can boost. Wait till you see the air that he throws out of this box. 
I think it's something in the water in South America. <laughs> they all air so high. Uh, 10 feet. The easy. 360 tilt. Come on, Gustavo. Look at that. Oh, yes. With the bar spin to no handle combination. Quick little bar spin. Oh! Doing a half bar spin. What? Oh my god, like his bars his bar are backwards. Keeps, what? what? He keeps on going. I did not see this in practice. Where did he pull that out? But that totally affects the Everything. way that your bike is handling as well. You got a short you got, got a shorter wheelbase. I that, oh. I don't think I've ever seen a park rider do tricks with their bars backwards. Did he do that on purpose? No, I, I, I think he slipped up a bit, but he kept, he kept on going. Like he didn't stop. He was like, you know, I got this. Wow. That is the final trick, that backflip can-can. My God. Talk about making it work for you. That was beautiful. Like, I want to see that in the replay. I know. Where did he go? Well, it didn't go wrong. So a bar spin is when you do a 360 rotation with the front wheel with the bars. Some guys will hang on to the bars as they go around. Some will just throw it. If it catches your shirt or catches something else, it could stop halfway. It could be that this was an accident. He throws one, two there. And I think it's on the next pass. That, that's a There's bar a, spin? Yeah. I think it happened on the next it's quarter, on maybe. The, maybe right here. That's a can-can. I think it was on, on the other end of this ramp. So here he's got his bars in the regular way. Maybe the camera's, ah, so as you can see, no. He's got it in the regular position as well. On he this jump. So many big tricks. But then that was so interesting to watch. We'll, I guess we'll have to wait to the second run to see if he did that on purpose. I, I mean, that's a sign of creativity. Maybe he had intended to do it like that. Now we've got one of the favorite riders in the world, Kevin Peraza, doing it for Mexico. Here with some of his family, getting ready to drop in. We haven't seen anybody drop in off that little high wall ride. Whip into oh! the transition. That takes a lot of nerve. Kevin's got such great style. With yes. the oh, front flip, and without brakes, makes it even harder because you can't lock your wheels while doing it. Nice double down. Whoa, oh. huge flare over the gap. Like the amount of travel that he's getting on those flares. One it's thing about Kevin, you insane. just see that smile on him the whole time. Huge pocket air, almost over jumped it. <laughs> like, the amount of, like, you have to pull back so hard to go from that Fujita spine uh, quarter into the Feast quarter. Look at that, Ellie, you pocket air? He is just having fun. Look at that. Oh. Oh, came off a little bit in the middle of that flare whip. Looked like he wanted to kick it back. He might have been trying to kick it back there. Oh, oh I've, the cheat, I've never seen him not pull that. That's OK. I mean, since this is a qualifier, this will affect his score. But still, I mean, my respect to Kevin Peraza for showing that amount of creativity and run. He got a little thrown off on this flare whip over here. Yeah. And I think he tried to come back and do the G-turn that he normally does, uh, but maybe didn't styles. have the speed. Yeah, he has those so on lock. So we got the slow-mo camera action. That was that Tiller dropping. And then with the front flip, hucking it over the box. Pretty clean landing on that one. And that, that's the LU air. That was beautiful. In a pocket. Everything was really flawless and just until that one flare whip. And like you said, we'll see if maybe he was trying to kick it back the other way. Doing it for Mexico. Yep. Like well, I, ju I just love the international atmosphere of every BMX contest that we go to. It's so fun. But you know, what's great is seeing all these guys cheer for each other. It's all just one big BMX family. And we're starting again back at the top with Dubby Caden Stone. He's here with his mom in Japan. She's cheering him on. And let's see what he does in this second run to maybe score some more points than he did in the first. He's going to hit that box. That's his bread and butter. Watch these spins. Oh, 720 double bar spin. Two truck drivers in the middle of it. He's coming after that double flare. Oh, oh going for it and just sliding out a little bit on the transition. But it looks like he is going to call it off. He started I so strong on that one. You know, once you lose your speed, lose your momentum, sometimes those guys just decide to call it off right there. He's having fun. I know this is like one of his first trips to Japan. He's had a great time. He's enjoying himself. He said, you know what? I'm not going to get hurt. 
Um, I had a great first run and decided to call it off. But let's look at some of the tricks he did hit there in his second run. And that was at 5.40. This is the one. Line, so so we got that amount of rotation for the 5.40, but ah, uh, yeah. Just landed a little sideways. Came in a bit mellow. I've seen that kid spin some crazy, crazy stuff on the step up over at the Dream Yard. But maybe they should bring back Dirt at Fils Montpellier as well. Then he can do a 40-40 in Fils Montpellier. Would be awesome to see. And a lot of these guys ride park and dirt. Uh, he is, Cadence is the first score to come in. It's at a 45, so that gives you an idea of what two runs together might score. It puts him pretty in the middle of the pack right now. Uh, probably not where he wanted to be, but we're going to see from Bruce and these next guys where they, if they can land two solid runs, if it's going to put him in one of those top spots. And here comes Brick, Nick Bruce from USA. Was our Chengdu 17 wow. winner. Oh my God. What a powerhouse. Come on, Nick. Keep it going. Flare downside to the whip. Hi. Getting ready for the box jump. 360 back, look nice, high and floaty. No hander like the eagles flying around this island. Setting up for this box. 360 tail whip. Solid run already. And he's also in the Olympic selection for Team USA for the upcoming Olympic qualifier series. Nick is just such a strong, athletic rider. You know, 60 seconds may not sound like a long time to you, but to get out there and do these tricks for 60 seconds straight, it really takes a lot of your gas tank. And Nick has it pumping up the crowd here in Japan. The crowd is loving it. We've got the sun setting in the background over this Inoshima beautiful hurricane park. Man, if you get a chance to come to a FIS event in Montpellier or a UCI event somewhere in the world, you've got to go see this in person because it's just so incredible to see. What are we seeing here? That was that 720 double tail whip. Two rotations of the bike and two rotations off the frame whipping around. That was that flare tail whip, downside tail whip. 360 backflip. There's so much going on. You're spinning on several different axes. Nick has landed some of the first tricks in the world. Uh, first flare windshield wiper, first 360 double whip, the downside. I mean, he's got a deep, deep bag of really technical tricks. We're going to wait and see if his score comes in, but we're going to have Dylan. And there's Nick Bruce's score, 87.1. That puts him in the first spot in the qualifiers. So that is five points ahead of number two. That is going to be the score to beat an 87.1. Justin Dow also coming to USA wants to see if he can top that score from Nick. Whoa. Oh. Okay. I think he hurt his neck a bit. He landed really awkwardly. I, yeah. I'm glad he's moving. Like a, a bit of a whiplash. Yeah, that was a really awkward way to land. He, it looked like kind of a seat grab, uh, maybe tail whip throw it after that. Uh, I think Tried going for that Twix, but oh missed, yeah, missed the bars, missed the whips. Up. Oh, I bet he was trying the 360 Twix, and that's probably what it was. Yeah. But he landed, and it really kind of threw him pretty violently. I'm glad to see him riding away. Uh, that's the important thing. These guys are safe. You know, it, this is such a dangerous sport, as you can imagine, and you may not realize that. But uh, besides the helmet, these guys are wearing all kinds of padding under their jeans, under you know sometimes their chest, and so they have a lot of protection that you may not see for stuff like that. Their ankles, everything. Mouth guards. Yep. And Justin, like, he has to conserve that energy because we have the Olympic qualifier series coming up to claim that spot at the Olympic Games coming up in, uh, in Paris next summer. And Justin is in the Olympic selection for Team USA. So uh, maybe like sit this one out and get all that energy going for the first Olympic qualifier. And, uh, it's in two months. That's going to be the one in Shanghai, China. These guys have a lot of pressure on them, you know, for contests like this that matter. Uh, for the UCI points, but also keeping in mind things like the Olympics, you know, uh, that, that's a lot to sort of carry as an athlete and go compete and have fun and do your best. And so, you know, Justin there just doing the smart thing, calling it off, walking off safe, ride again another day. Yeah. 
But earlier on, we were doing some interviews with uh, with the women, and I was talking to Lara Lesman, German mm -hmm. rider, and we were talking about coaching, uh, not just coaching for your tricks, but also mental coaching. Yes. Yeah. Since I mean, Claude, you mentioned all the pressure that there is, and that's something to keep in mind. You can be the best in the world, but you also want to enjoy the sport that you grew up with. Back to Croatia, to Marin Rantes. Quick truck driver, 360 bar spin. Getting nice and high. Yeah. 720 tail whip. That's what we're talking about. Throwing that late no-hander always looks so dangerous, so crazy. Like getting your bars, uh, getting your hands back to your bars just in time before you hit the landing. He's got this crazy transfer right here, three across the hip. He's got those locked in, those triple whips. He had a really good first run, and it looks like he's 20 seconds away from a really great second run. I think Modern is among some of the most consistent riders in uh, in the World Championship, uh, the World Cup, excuse me. Yeah. Yes, Martin. Eight seconds, still got time for one more hit on this box. Nice little three, to, oh, no hitter, and hanging up just a little bit. Just a bit of a hang up. Even had a time for another tail whip. Yeah. Great, great second run from Marin. And just the nicest guy in the world. You know, every time I've been around him, he's super friendly, very kind, gracious, easy to talk to. Like, he's a pro on and off the bike. And also a pretty funny guy. <laughs> the last days he was having fun with making his own kind of photo collages on Instagram with all the other riders. But now, talking about consistency, looking at last year, a 13th place in Saudi Arabia, 16th at, um, at Brussels, a fourth place, so just shy of that podium in China. Like, we went wild in the commentating group in China with Martin's riding. Look at that, doing it for Croatia, Hrvatska. We're about to see this score come in to see if Marin can I think take he was the saying, top spot. I think he was saying Molim Te, which means I love you, Croa uh, oh. I love you in Croatian. So maybe he was saying I love you, Croatia. Molim Te, Hrvatska. Nick Bruce is sitting on 87.1 in the first spot. Second is 82, so there's a lot of room up there for some higher scores. Yeah. Now, in order to qualify from qualifiers to a semifinal, you need to secure a spot that is 24 or uh, 24th place or better. Okay. And also, like the higher you qualify, that is going to give you like an advantage in, in semifinals and in finals as well, because you'll be riding later than all the other riders. Wow, so, 86.3 right under Nick Bruce, but still, like we said, in those top spots, and uh, we still have another heat to go, but that's probably gonna be enough to put him in qualifications, right? Yeah, like, virtually he is in that semifinal. All right, here's our guy who can air higher than anybody out of this box. Watch this. He is Samba on a bike, Gustavo Oliveira. Now, in his first run, we saw him get kind of tangled up in his bars backwards. He kept going with it, even pulled some tricks with his bars backwards. <laughs> yeah. You could hear the other riders responding uh, in disbelief because we haven't really seen that. We don't know if he did it on purpose, but I think we'll find out here in a minute and see if he does it again. Uh, I think it was a slip bar, but he got away with it. I think he impressed the judges with riding with bars backwards. Uh, pocket air playing all the way back. You're using a lot of shoulder muscle on that one. Yes, double bar spin. Come on, Gustavo. He might have picked seconds. up. He may have picked up a new signature trick if he's going to do the bar backwards. <laughs> Just doing doing a whole run with bars backwards. Exactly. And the last trick, the can can backflip, and that's a timer. That's a buzzer. Yeah. Another good, solid second run. I think this is going to score pretty high for him. This is going to be, my guess is top five. We saw consistency, we saw height, we saw originality, especially with the bars backwards. <laughs> and just that, you know, it's it's that extra bit of that, that samba that he puts into his bike. 
It's like he's dancing on, on the on the course. Oh, look at that. So a backflip and then combining a bar spin and a no-hander. Do the judges uh, count any extra points for them having no breaks versus having back breaks? Are those kind of the things that they might consider in difficulty? That would depend on the trick. Like if you're doing a tail tap with a break, yep. that that will be easy. that can be easier when down with a break. Uh, so it's really depending on the trick that you're performing. Do you need that pedal pressure? Do you need like a, a, a locking force, you know, like a break, for example? So it depends. It depends, but it's not really a huge difference. Gustavo feeling good about that. I'm gonna call it a day with his jacket. And wait for his score to come in. Uh, talking yeah. about brakes, we have a lot of riders with uh, the gyroscopes on their bikes. So that means you can keep on turning your bars without twisting your brake cables. Oh, look, Gustavo coming in 74.1. Yeah. Kind of in that sixth place spot. Probably still good enough to qualify. I bet he's got some more stuff he wants to do in the semifinals. But now we're finishing up with Again, our, one of our favorites, Kevin Peraza, pointing to God, saying a little prayer as he's about to drop in off this huge wall again. Whip. Oh, like the, the height of feet. that quarter is insanely yeah. high. That is like 20 feet, six meters. This park is a lot bigger than it might look on camera. Yeah, that drop in's huge. Come on, Kevin, keep it going. Nice. Oh, yes. Superman seed grab, fully stretched. Just signature, signature Kevin Peraza move. <sighs> wow. Oh, came off the bike just a little bit there. He whipped from the hip into the inside pocket of that other curve. I haven't seen anybody do that. Like the distance on that one. Now he's got 20 seconds left, so instead of calling it off, he's going to keep throwing some more tricks. He's going to put on a what? show. What? <laughs> 540? Into the transition, <laughs> landing 180. Okay, now he's done. Now he's done. Kevin, showing love to this crowd in Japan, uh, walking down, shaking some hands. <laughs> I mean, this is why people love Kevin Peraza. Look at that. Doing it for Mexico, doing it for Monster. You know, this is about having fun and showing people that BMX is just an awesome sport. Like, he's the crowd's favorite. In, in Brussels, he messed up on his second run, uh, and that was like halfway his run. What he did is picked up his bike again, started doing the most insane tricks that he could do. Wow. You know, so that's that tail whip drop in. This just reminds you, it's more than just competing. It's about showing people a good time. And just spreading the joy of BMX freestyle. So here we have that stretched Superman seat grab, stretching the legs, grabbing the seat. Every trick Kevin does is like a poster that I want to put on my wall. It's always so photo picturesque. He's doing that, and with a smile on his face. There he is, showing some love to the crowd. Still having a great time, and probably, honestly, a great run. I mean, even with the mess up, he might end up still qualifying. For, for to be in the top qualifying, he needs a point of a score of a 44.7. So we're going to have to wait and see. There was a slip up in the first run and a slip up in the second. So that might just put Kevin somewhere on the bubble of that 44.7. What do you think if you had to make a guess? That's going to be a tough one. Maybe somewhere in the lower 20s, like spot 21, 22. But we still have six more riders coming up. Yeah, that's true. Now, we are not judges, and so I, I wouldn't want to have to judge this, but from past experience, we can kind of make some guesses on how they might be doing as far as the score. Kevin's score should be coming in any minute as he gets back on the ramp, goes back to his family and friends over there. Now, in the judging panel, we have the likes of Brian Kaczynski, Dave Dillaward. Lots uh, of history. Yeah. I mean, that's probably 200 years of BMX experience over there. Kevin, wow, look at that. 45, just edging out the legend, Ryan Nyquist, who's not going to be super happy about that. That's kind of a bummer because we all love Ryan Nyquist, who came out to compete this uh, event. But Kevin just edging him out for one of the spots in the qualifiers. That means that Ryan won't be going on in the qualification of the semifinal. Uh, but Kevin will get another chance to show what he can do on some of these ramps. 
So we're in the next group, starting off with the Argentinian Pan American Games winner, Jose Torres Gil. Oh, look at the height of that drop, wow. 720. Like the speed, the high that he's getting. Oh, he's on a tear, getting high on the wall. He's ripping up this park. Oh. oh, getting a little sideways on that, but still landing it, keeping his speed. Super smooth on that transition. And there's no signs of stopping with Jose. Yeah, he is tearing into this Hurricane Park. Come on, Jose, keep it going. Yes. yes. Channel wall ride. We haven't seen that today. Back foot tail whip. Man, he's throwing so many big tricks in such a little amount of time. He's still got 15 yeah. seconds left. I like every obstacle he hits, he's doing a trick. And that's what the judges want to see. They want to see as many tricks on all the transition you can. He's using the whole course. Big flare there with one second left. Wow. I'm impressed by this one. And that if, was a great first run. If he can continue this in that second run as well, we might have a new first place in qualifiers. It's a great first run. But uh, we're going to watch some highlights. But up next, we're going to have a Japanese legend coming in here. Jose had an amazing season last year. Uh, won the, he won the Pan American Games. He got gold at the X Games. And looking at the World Cup season, fourth place in Saudi Arabia, ninth place in Montpellier, sixth place in Brussels. There's no signs of stopping with this man. Wow. <laughs> All right, here comes the, uh, we're waiting on that score still, but we're gonna keep going and. We're waiting for the I Japanese know the crowd, revelation. Yeah, the crowd is getting ready to get loud. Look at Rim. Looks like he started growing a mustache. That's that's something new. <laughs> I haven't seen Rim with, with a mustache yet. I'm liking it. He's getting a little older, man. A little more experience. <laughs> older, I think he's in his early 20s still. <laughs> it's a sign of wisdom. Yeah, it's <laughs> well, we're still waiting for that last score, but they're going to let Rimu go ahead and start. You can't hold him back because Japan wants to see their champion. Rim, oh. huge transition. Off to a great start already. Now setting up for success on that jump box. 720 bar spin. Stomping that wall right. Going back into the box section. It's a tail whip. Flair bar spin, keeping it going. Hitting everything on this course with full speed. Rim Nakamura doing it for Japan. 2022 world champion. All right, he's slowing down a little bit. What's he setting up for? Oh, getting high on that wall again. Hit the box. Whoa, Back flip. triple. Tri I, think, I, think it, I think it was a triple bar spin that he did. Last seconds on the clock for Rim Nakamura. And that's getting in the last few tricks. Say, so that was a backflip with three bar spins while he's flipping over the box. We call it a truck driver, taking the hand all the way around with the bars. Those are some of the biggest tricks in park right now, and Rim just had a very clean, great first run. Like, we gotta see that in the replay. And like, the way that he does it, he throws at the bars, catches him again, throws him again, catches him again. Like, so many things could go wrong. Wow, oh, look at that. So that's just, oh, almost <laughs> missing the transition you can see on his face. He was probably more surprised than us. Crazy tricks. Probably a little pressure on him with this, you know, Shima crowd, but you know what? He handled it great. He put down a great run, and we're going to see what if his score reflects that in just yeah. a second and see if it knocks out Nick and some of these guys at the top. So next up on the Olympic selection team of Team USA, Marcus Christopher. 360. And an odd thing about him is he rides goofy footed, which yep. means he turns to the same way as, as, the, uh, as his pedals fa facing. Keeps it going, come on. Double downside tail from Marcus. Wow, doing these 360. Long, long transfers. Oh, 
scraping the coping on, on the way back in. Still got 30 seconds on the clock. Plenty of time left, but he's put down some big tricks already. Huge 540, 540 flare. What? Whoa! <laughs> I don't think he meant to do that, <laughs> but it looked good. Yeah, it's like trying to be a feeble on the box. <laughs> he lost some speed, but he's got time for one more hit, one more trick. He's keeping it going. He's being a true sport about it. Nice. Yeah, look back. Very stylish. Turning his body, twisting his body all around that hat tube. I think that hang up probably took a lot of energy out of his run, and he just wanted to finish with some more clean tricks. That's something else the judges uh, will be looking at. Like, are you pedaling in between obstacles? That, that's often a sign that you didn't really set up for your jump or that you did maybe like a sloppy landing. Yeah, a course that's this tight, really you should not pedal at any point. Like if you land everything smooth with the transition, you should be able to pump and keep your speed for the most part, other than a few pedals here and there. So yeah, it, seeing them pedal across the flat means that pro something probably went wrong. But here we're gonna look at some highlights from that. Double, double whip. Yeah, double whip backflip. And that's a 360 backflip. Man, looking over, finding the landing, yeah. landing it perfectly. That's what you want to see. Yeah, like, you can see his head turn, and then as soon as he spots that landing, keeps on looking to the landing to set up for a good good one. Then we have that 540 flare. Man, so many big tricks. I actually forgot about all that he did before this. Uh, and that was uh, the, the <laughs> sprocket stall? Yeah, a little sprocket. Let's call it a sprocket stall. Sprocket grind. But even got in this little look back at the end, very stylish. Marcus waiting for his score to come in. He was an X Games, uh, X Games competitor just at the end of last year. And here's France's favorite, Anthony Jean Jean. And he's he will be riding at the Olympics in Paris since yeah, France is the host station of the Olympics. But this guy has had such a great season. Starting off strong. Come on, Anthony. Anthony been a part of the feast competitions for many, many years and just kind of came up watching it as a you know a spectator. And now he's one of the top athletes in the world. Wow, flowing this huge five flare. Made in France, no no, made in feast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was a triple 360 tail. Using the Spox. 720. Keeps it Man, going. Tons of speed still with 20 seconds left. And this man is a true athlete. On Instagram last week, he was doing some kind of heat training where he was like pedaling an indoor bike while having the heaters on him as well. No. Landed sort of flat on that last flare whip. Come on, Let's see if he keeps his speed up. Quick no-hander. Keeps it going. And that's going to be the time for Anthony Jean Jean. Yeah. Couple little hang-ups, but overall, that's a pretty good run because the tricks he did with his time were just such big tricks. Let's look at some of the highlights, and you tell us kind of what what do you think are going to score some of the highest points out of that. Let's see. Now, for the upcoming Olympics, he already has that experience from Tokyo a couple years ago. So that was that backflip, double tail whip, and then here we have that Five. 540 flare. Like I said, there were just so many tricks in that 60 seconds, I almost can't remember what he did. But one, two, three. So that was that backflip triple tail whip, kicking the bike three times. 720, double rotation. He starts to hang up on some of these tricks, and landed a little low on that, lost a little speed. I don't know if the judges are going to see that, score that. Still, I believe that's going to be a pretty good solid run. Yeah, we'll have sure. to see after that second run how the judges will score both of their runs. And now it's getting a bit like a, it's almost like five o'clock here in uh, Japan. It's getting a bit cold as well, so all the riders after the run they get on their jackets immediately to keep those muscles warm and going. Looks like the someone's having Anthony's up there pedaling. Uh, someone's oh, bike, some bike trouble. Sometimes these guys will bring two bikes, so, you know, they'll have mechanics, they'll have extra parts. Like Logan and uh, Bajon, he completed the final on three separate wheels. I think it looks like a chain. Whose bike is that? Is that? I can't tell. Maybe it's an extra bike for Kieran. But they're trying to put the chain back together or put it back on. Maybe he broke a chain, which will happen sometimes. Now, will the judges allow them 
uh, a chance to miss the run if there's bike problems, or do they have to go immediately? Because he looks stressed. Yeah. The thing is, he qualifiers, um, you know, with both runs counting, um, and like your bike should be solid and set up. It looks run. like he's taking somebody else's bike. I, I don't know for sure. I think that's Charlotte Char Worthington's bike, the British Olympic gold medalist from Tokyo 2020. So here we're seeing Kieran. Uh, looks like he had some bike trouble, but he just grabbed a friend's bike and did a front <laughs> flip on it. Oh. Bailing on that front flip. I mean, it's not easy. Just grabbing someone else's bike because like they have maybe a different geometry that they're riding with different top tube size uh, another oh, back end size even the angle of your head tube that can have a huge difference on your riding style it looks like Kieran just you know wasn't willing to put the risk out there to try to do some of that stuff on somebody else's bike like you said it's so different there's so much opportunity to get hurt he's doing the smart thing walking away uh, and just recognizing that, man, I'll have to wait for that second run and hope that it has enough to put him in that top 24. Yeah. I don't know what, I guess he's got 10 seconds left here. Let's just do something for some points because both runs do count. The yeah. scores are combined, so. I think you got Jeffrey Willie, Willie's <laughs> he's bike, got a line of bikes. Canadian. And they have about, let's say, the same height, so. Yeah. Well, it might, might have been a good choice, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, but you know, we're early in 2024. We still have a long season to go. We have the Olympics, and maybe he can put all his money on the, on the Olympics. Aha. Uh -huh. And next up, your Tokyo 2020 gold medalist, two times world champion, Logan Martin, starting off strong with that front flip. Logan Martin is the man everyone is watching this year. 720 double bar spin. Wow, getting high on that wall. He's just got box trips for tricks for days. This is a lot like his setup back in Australia at his house that he trains on every day. Like he has the, the perfect, uh, let's say, backyard setup at his house on the Gold Coast in Australia. He's got so many flare tricks, so many like backflip tricks. And he makes it look flawless. Like he's not even breaking a sweat. This man is a demigod. Oh, look Finding at that. the landing. Come on, Logan, keep it going. In the last couple of seconds. One more. Oh, nice flare. Textbook style. And <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ending with a barrel roll? <laughs> you know, one of the advantages of going later in the competition is you get to see how the other riders have done and what you might need to have a better score. And so Logan has that advantage because of the points that he's built before then from last year to go later. I think that was a little bit safer run for Logan, but he at this point just wants to make it into qualification for the semifinals. But his easy run includes things like this. Yeah, like doing a front flip as, as an easy, as a safe choice. I say that with a lot of grace. Yeah, yeah, easy yeah. run for Logan Martin for, for, is yeah. different than most people. Like, uh, you know, like in, in video games, you have easy, medium, <laughs> and hard mode, and then there's Logan Martin mode. <laughs> that on a signature hyper bikes that's that barrel roll man just making it look easy bit of an off uh, like in between a barrel and an off axis backflip uh, that's that backflip bar spin it's a no hander he just gets so high over that box he can throw he can throw more combinations in there if he wanted to but you can tell he's holding it back maybe just a little bit on that first run I think he was the last rider in our first in our heat there, which means we're going to start back at the top. And since it's the second run, we're going to see what their end total is. So those, those both runs combined. Back to the Argentinian Jose Torres Gil, Pan American wow. champion, X Games gold medalist. Come on, Jose, show us that Argentinian style. Jose is just in another gear. Oh, back to the <laughs> bar spin, looking for that no-hander. Coming you know, in hot for the wall ride. 360 double tail whip. But he was able to adjust in the air, stay on the bike, keep all that speed, which that's really what matters. He hasn't come off the bike, and he's still throwing big tricks on all this for his second run. But one of the best performing South American athletes. Last World Championships, he got the ninth spot in Glasgow. 
big flare whip. Wow, and look how much speed he got off that trick. Still 10 seconds left. Still a little bit, of, slightest bit of a hang up. Flare, nice and clean. And, oh, disaster. <laughs> oh, disaster. That's an old school trick. It's called a disaster because it used to be at the end of your chain yeah. when you did that. Back in the day when we had 40 teeth sprockets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, they're all riding like 25 to maybe 28, yeah. depending on your preference. I, I think that's got to score pretty high in the 80s. My we're, guess. We're not judging, though. Uh, we have a great panel of judges who now will have to deliberate and find out what the final score are combined for these riders for the qualification. So that's that alley-oop pocket air, man. I love alley-oops. Alley-oop is you're turning one direction, but you're actually moving to the other direction Yeah, like while the way of travel it. is the opposite side. Wow, look how high. You can't even see the ramp in the screenshot because he's so high on that. All right, Jose Torres, we're waiting to see if he will take one of the top spots or even beat out Nick Bruce, who sits at 87.1. That is the score to beat to have that top final spot going into the semifinals. Do you think he did it? My guess is somewhere among the top, top five maybe. But that's not up to me, I'm just an, I'm just an, an humble announcer. You know, each of these oh. judges a lot of times looks for different things and there his score the is 84.16, putting him at number three, which is a great spot going into tomorrow. I think he's going to feel great about that, but now we're going to see what the Japanese phenom Rim can do. Your 2020 simple session winner. Your 2020, 2022 world champion Rim Nakamura doing it for Japan. He's on his home turf. Oh, he has a crowd with him. 720 double bar spin. Wall right, slapping onto the wall. Big down rip. <laughs> yes, with the flare bar spin setting up for that transfer to 270 bar spin to no hander. Top again, pocket air. Still 30 oh. seconds left on the clock. Really clean and lofty downside tail up. Traveling wow. over the channel. <laughs> Just floating it. Rim has been riding since a really young age, but I feel like a couple years ago, he just started winning everything, like tricks like that, throwing the bar so fast. Like, wherever he's competing is always like somewhere like in top 10, top five maybe. Five seconds left. Time for just one more hit on maybe this pocket. Nice. Like, I remember seeing him in Brussels, and he got, he got the second spot on the podium. It was a really tight battle between him, Anthony, Jean Jean, and Logan Martin, but eventually uh, it was Anthony that took the win after that Brussels stop. Man, look at Rim, breathe a huge sigh of relief. We got the sun setting in the background over the mountains in Japan, and Rim knows that he's put down a good enough run that's probably gonna put him in one of the qualifier spots. Now we're just waiting to see where he lands toward the end. Let's look at some highlights. So that was that 720 double bar spin, throwing the bars twice. That was that transfer, so the 270 bar spin, and then throwing his hands out for that no-hander. You know, we saw in his first run, he looked surprised. Yeah, he almost didn't get that around. Yeah, the backflip triple bar spin, and look at the, the travel on that transfer. That was a beautiful thing. But he looked a little surprised to land some of the stuff in the first run, <laughs> even on his own face. Yeah, like sometimes you're going in blind when you start a trick, like you're going full speed, you think you have to speed right, and then you just have to put your faith into your bike. Just hang on. Well, Rim is waiting anxiously, as is Japan right now, as they wait to see, is he gonna nudge out our leader, Nick Bruce, who's sitting at 87.1. The judges are taking their time to get this right talking, deliberating, making sure that they get the right score. Yeah. And the way it works is they all have these iPads lined up 
on your desk, and they just have to upload the points, then it goes into a, a, a central server, and that server then transmits the points to our screen, which should be coming in a second now. And all right, wow, 86.7. That puts Rim Nakamura in number two spot going into the semifinals. That's a great run. He feels great about that. That will let him go almost last in the semis, which is a great place to be so that you can watch how others do. Well, but next up. Four riders to go, starting off with Marcus Christopher. Marcus has some big tricks, though, and he's coming in hot on this box. Wow. Uh -huh. Double downside tail whip and then transferring into the jump box. Oh, downside foot plan on the wall. Digging that one. It's a great run. I feel like now he got hung up a little bit on his first run. We'll see if he can make it through the second one and hit all the stuff he wants to hit like that. Wow. Double downside tail whip. <laughs> 540 flare. Come on, Marcus. Keep it going. 20, right, 20 more seconds. seconds. Yeah. Here's where the stamina really matters for these guys. These are true athletes. Four seconds left. Solid run. Wants to just hit this and right away. That's on the buzzer. Right on the buzzer. Marcus Christopher doing it for USA. And that's a good, that's a good solid run. So we'll wait and see. Is that going to put him in one of the qualification spots? Which right now, that's all these guys are trying to do is get into the top 24, make it to the semifinals. Uh, both runs are combined together by the judges to get this score. Let's look at some highlights from Justin's run. Sorry, Marcus's run. So that's the double downside tail whip. That's a fun little section right there. Like the obstacles that, that Hurricane Parks has made for this, uh, this event. 540 flare. And here we have that downside foot plan on the wall. That's technical, it's creative, it's what we're looking for in a great line. So right now we have the cameras on Marcus Christopher and Nick Bruce because Nick is in that hot seat right now. He's just sitting back watching now to see if he will stay in that first spot. And I mean, Nick has a lot of fees experience. I mean, he won the 2017 Chengdu stop. And he's also in the Olympic selection. So it must be weird, like, being, like, battling it out with your teammate. And that's a 79.30. Number six is pretty good. That's actually really good. That's still pretty good. I mean, yep. you're, you're qualifying. You're qualifying. He had a few hang-ups in the first run. And so to land there overall means he still had some really big tricks. And the judges rewarded that. No. But now we get to see Anthony Jean Jean, the pride of France. And Oh, backflip, double tail whip. One Anthony, keep it going. Yep. Anthony, yeah, 360 bar spin. Axe up, crossing the bars. He just makes it look so easy sometimes, and these are some of the hardest tricks in the world that he's throwing. Like he has to pedal a bit in between the ramps, so that's messing up his flow a bit. That's something that the judges will be looking at. But still, pretty solid riding. 720 by Anthony Jean Jean. Like he's back in the flow. This little transfer across the hip and hit the pocket. All right, what's he got? Yes. Nice. Flare tail went nice and high. Still got 10 seconds left on that clock. Let's see what he has for us. Bar spin transfer over the channel. Whoa. <laughs> little wheelie down the channel. Yeah, like on the, on the edge of looping out, but the, you he know, kept on going. I feel like the things that started to go wrong in the first one just were little tiny things, but he got them in that one. He landed a little low over here, but it didn't stop his speed. Kept it going. No, fun thing about Anthony uh, is, uh, you know, with France being the host uh, country for the Olympics, he's going to be an Olympic torchbearer in May. Wow. What an honor. Yeah. But I think it's hot. <laughs> like running around with a torch all the time. 
I believe they let you opt to keep the torch that you run with too, which is really cool. You I'm, can take it. I think um, they do, yeah. And like the French are going like completely mad over the Olympics. Like oh, there's so much going on in Paris and like all around. And the venue itself is going to be at the um, uh, Le Champs Elysees, like the, the big street in between the Arc de Triomphe, and it's going to be at the Place de la Concorde, which is like in the middle of Paris, right next to the river La Seine. It's, like, it's like going to be amazing. Yeah. I'm sure they'll be getting loud for Anthony Jean-Jean. I mean, Paris, the city of love, and it might be the city of Anthony Jean-Jean. <laughs> Showing his love for this Japanese crowd. I think we're about to see his score come in and see if it takes the top spot from Nick Bruce because, again, those were some big, big tricks. And, wow, it did. What? 91.5. Anthony Jean-Jean is our new leader going into the semifinals tomorrow. Just edged out Nick Bruce, who now is sitting in second place. Wow. Now we're back to Kieran Riley. He had a bit of a slip up in that first run because his bike broke down. Looks like he fixed it. He's back on that white bike, his own bike, with his geometry that he likes, so he can put on the big Kieran Riley show. Kieran has got some heavy, heavy tricks, man, when he gets in the flow. So he's really got to make this run count. This is basically his only run to get into that top 24. Like you said, he had a chain break right it, during the practice, and it something went wrong, and they were trying to fix it when he was supposed to be taking his first run. Yeah. What? Pretty solid run already by Kieran Riley, the current world champion, donning that rainbow jersey. Lost a little speed on that one transfer, but he's got it back. Wow. Heavy. Kieran, keep it going. Yeah, he needs to hit every obstacle. He needs to trick everything he has and bring to, it all right here. He has to max it out on every criteria that they have for judging. He's got eight seconds left. What's he going to do? Whip, flare. And that's the buzzer. Nice. <laughs> flare. You know, that's not his only jersey that he has, but last season he also got the European title and the, uh, the bridge title as well. Yeah, he's just such a great, great park rider. Um, just really strong. And that was a really strong second run. Now we just have to wait and see. And he's just wondering, is that enough? Was that enough to beat out guys who had two decent runs, you know, in the first heat? And it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a nail biter. I would not want to be judging this. But let's look back at some highlights from what Dick Kieran was able to do with this second run. So that's the... 720 tail whip. Nice and clean on that tall order bike. Tall order, the company of Sebastian Keep. We got to see Kieran ride at X Games Los Angeles, and he was just throwing down some of the craziest tricks on that course. Such a good dude. Like, the way to describe his style is, I'd say, British Bulldog. Like, he goes hard, he goes heavy. You know what? He, I feel like he's trying to have a good attitude about it, you know, and not let it bother you too much. I mean, that, like you said earlier, so much of this is mental. So to get in that top 24, it looks like he needs a 52, but Kieran, unfortunately, is coming in 43.5. You know what, waving to the crowd, it's okay. There's always gonna be another day for him to show Let's what he can like do. Like a champ. But speaking of champs, now we've got... <laughs> Starting off strong with that front flip no-hander by Logan Martin. Look at that. Oh, 720 tail whip. This is why Logan won the gold medal for the 2020 Olympics. He just has so many crazy tricks. That's going, getting high on that backflip bar spin, no hander. Flair, downside tail. It might have been an opposite footed one. He's still going up when he was throwing his hands off. It's almost like he could have thrown the bars one or two more times in that trick. Logan just has such strength, you know, such big airs. Even this, he's probably, you know, maybe doing something that's, like we said earlier, safe for Logan. Wow. <laughs> Come on, Logan. Last 10 seconds. Like, he's taking it to be easier on the last one. a little flare, and flare. that's probably all he needs. Wave into the crowd. There's your champion of just almost everything last year. We're going to see if that was enough to put him in front of 
Anthony Jean Jean, who sits at a 91.5. We'll wait and see what the judges think of Logan Martin and that run. What are some of the highlights from that that you remember? Yeah, we'll have to see. I mean, definitely the front flip no hander. Yeah, that's the, that's the one I want to see back in the, in the replay. Look at this. This is just a beautiful shot in Oshima. Oh. Put you like, in a romantic mood, actually. <laughs> like I said, if you get a chance to attend a feast or a UCI event, look at this. Ten feet over the box, throwing the hands. That's at 720 tail wow. whip. Wow. Look, look at, at the that air. Spotting the landing. <laughs> Clean spinning. Double tail whip. Doing it for the Gold Coast. Yeah. Yo, Claude, do you know the three certainties in life? <laughs> Well, that's death. Death, Logan it's Martin. Texas winning. and Logan Martin getting on a podium. <laughs> wow, did you see the height on that? Almost out of the frame. Rocking his donut gloves. I think Nicole Kidman posted something about him after the Olympics. I think that might have been one of the highlights yeah. of my life. <laughs> yeah, being mentioned by Nicole Kidman. Exactly. <laughs> they were so proud, you know, just to have a champion from their nation. Logan, again, has a lot of pressure on him, you know, to keep that up. So he came here and did two really good runs. Uh, so we got Anthony Jean-Jean, the Frenchie in the hot seat with that 91.50. Man, the judges, the judges. They, they know how to score these tricks. They've seen Logan. They know what he can do. It's a hard job. I mean, that's the hard thing about BMX. You're judging someone's riding someone's performance and it's not a personal matter it's just it's it's a sport it's what happens on, on, on the track and after a competition like they just go for a cup of coffee and it's all okay all right it's come in at 91.0 so it puts him just a half point under Anthony Jean Jean but it will still put Logan in that second spot qualifying for tomorrow he will go next to last I'm sure he's happy about that. He's putting his jacket on. He's done for the day. He did what he needed to do. Like this qualification group was a pleasure to watch. What an amazing event. Look at the venue. Look at the island of Inoshima. Japan just never disappoints. Here we have the results list for qualification. Anthony Jean Jean doing it for France, coming in at first place. Then Logan Martin, Nick Bruce in third. Rim from Japan in fourth. Marin, Jose, Dylan Hesse, Marcus Christopher. Like, like a nice variety of, of riders, you know, like we got the very technical ones, we got the big and burly riders from all over the world. Like we're taking yeah. off every box. We have a couple of Japanese riders in the qualification, which yeah. is great to see. Yes, definitely very diverse. So we got four Japanese riders qualifying into the semifinals. Man, if you thought that was amazing, you're going to want to check out the semifinals with these guys. What an amazing event. I always love uh, the, the courses that Hurricane builds. Always challenges these guys. It always makes them think outside the box, putting new elements into it so that we get to see the more, you know, more of what they can do every time. Yeah, and in general, the overall fees atmosphere that we have, like there's no rivalry. Like you can just like joke along with all the riders, like even if you're not really into the sport, like you can go up to them and have a chat about anything and they'll, they'll answer and you can have a nice chat. Well, this has been the UCI BMX Freestyle World Cup Men's Qualification 2024. It's the first stop uh, for the UCI. There are other events coming up this year that are going to be really exciting that we can watch for. Yeah, we still have uh, FIS Montpellier, so like the, the OG, the original FIS contest. Uh, that's in May, and I think the week after, there will be the first Olympic qualifier series in Shanghai. The QS1. Oh, QS, yeah. All and eyes are going to be on Shanghai for that. Mm -hmm. If you've never been to a FIS okay, event. we're going to take a look at the winning run. All right. So we had Anthony Jean Jean. This was Look at his, his second run, I think. No, line. this is his first run. Gets nice so high on that the, wall. Yeah, he gets so high on that wall. It gives him the speed to do all these tricks over the box. Thank you. Going back to that funky obstacle with the 540 flare. 
Nice and high, setting up for the jump box, and boom! The backflip triple tailwind. I'm sure France will love to show up in Montpellier and see Anthony Jean Jean perform there in May. But here in Japan, he has put down the top qualifying run. We're watching some of the highlights from it right now. Man, huge flare whip. If this is an appetizer for the rest of the season, we're gonna see a lot more of Anthony Jean Jean. It was amazing. Now, the, I mean, the, the level of riding today was so high. And, and you know, when you combine the two runs together, it, it just means that they have to be able to perform that twice in a row. They can't just go out and have one amazing run and one run that they call off. So it really puts a lot of pressure on them to, to land every trick and not come off the bike. That was Anthony Jean Jean's first run. So some more of those highlights in slow-mo. So that was that 540 flare. Just look at his, his posture on the bike, how, how he controls it. Now that's, was, that's was, true athleticism. I was going to ask you earlier, you know, some of these guys, the, how do you go, how do you learn these tricks? Well, a lot of times they'll learn them into a foam pit or maybe learn them onto a airbag and then a resi. You know, there's sort of a process to learning some of these tricks. They don't just go out and try them onto a landing first try. No, so, and also, Anthony has some great facilities close to him. Uh, he's close to Montpellier, so he can use one of the other hurricane parks that's built, built there permanently. But he also has great coaching. I think in France, he's being coached by Patrick Dimé. He's, uh, he's also a legend in French BMX freestyle. Uh, then also, like, a whole team around him. Like, we're talking about uh, a mental coach. We're talking about a physical coach. We're talking about doctors, dietitians. And this is something that every country is doing. Like, if you walk around at a feast event, you're going to see all these Let's say cruise around the rider. Um, but all in all, beautiful run by Anthony Jean Jean. I mean, the professionalism that he rides with. It's great that today there's so many skate parks around where kids can get a bike and start to learn just little jumps and little things and they go from there. Yeah. Well, hey, want to say thank you. This has been an incredible honor to be here. The UCI BMX Freestyle World Cup. Uh, I'm Claude Hickman from USA. With me is Egon. It's well, been awesome. It's been awesome. Like I had a lot of fun here, here at the island of Inoshima, and uh, I hope we get to do this again. I know. It's beautiful here. Again, we want to thank Hurricane Parks, and we want to thank the country of Japan for having us in their beautiful country. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato. And we'll see you at the semifinals. Number one spot in the world. The biggest contest with the best crowd. Fantabui Montpellier! The energy here is unmatched. You have to come to experience it. Even though the contest looks crazy on TV, you have to come here to experience the energy. Uh, the only way I can describe it is it's the most intense thing you've ever seen.